we yeah. ring this yeah. bell and light this candle to remind us all of oh, the here light we go. that's in all of us. And we're so grateful for that light. If you will, stay with me and recite with me the opening statement. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. And just breathe that in for a moment. Let a smile come to your face. Be here in this moment. And let's say that again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Our music today is going to be led by Jeff and Jim. Ron's on the road. We're so excited. So take it away. Stand if you like. Pardon me? Uh-huh. Surely the presence of God is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the touch of angels' wings. I see glory on his face. Surely the presence of God is in this place. Surely the presence of place. I can feel her mighty power and her grace. There's a holy hush around us. I see glory on his face. Surely the presence of God is in this place. Imagine yourself 15 years old. Peace, my
everybody to another wonderful Sunday at Unity of Kanawha Valley. For our announcements today, the, we're collecting luggage and backpacks for Davis Children's Shelter. As you all know, um, these children, as they transition to wherever's next for them, could use something to take their things in. That's not a garbage bag. And we're so happy to provide them with a little bit of dignity and a little bit of hope with the gift of a bag. Dewey Lester takes those uh, every so often. How often does he take them, Pam? About once every two weeks. About every two weeks, Dewey goes down there, and it's, it's just a wonderful blessing to them and a wonderful opportunity for us. We're collecting non-perishable snacks and hygiene products for the Sojourner's Shelter. This month in October, there's a barrel at the base of the stairs that way. Uh, if you're so inclined, please donate there. We are a tithing church. This month, we're giving 10% of our offering to HealthRight, a local organization that's been so active in our community, helping all of us to keep healthy. I've got insurance, but I was able to go through and, and get a vaccination there. No questions asked. Um, they're very kind people, and they're right there in the heart of Charleston. If you're in need of prayer, Call our prayer chaplain line at 304-945-0033 or Silent Unity, and the number is in your program today. Our prayer chaplain is Sharon Mullins. Say hi, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon is a wonderful prayer partner and a wonderful prayer chaplain, and we love hearing from you. Any, any need that's on your heart, please give us a call. Thank you to everyone who participates in our Amazon Smile and Kroger fundraisers. Uh, these are our passive kinds of things. You just sign up to have a, a portion given to Unity. It doesn't come out of your pocket. It is a gift from Amazon and from Kroger, and it comes to Unity. It helps us out. How, do you have a number for us? couple thousand dollars a year so every little bit counts it all adds up every little thing you do matters we have a t-shirt and tote bag sale going on in the lending library if you don't have your unity t-shirt go and get one the bags are wonderful I like mine um, you know having that unity bag carrying it around town it can spark a conversation and it's they're kind of cute too we are accepting donations uh, this month for um, Justin, who's had a kidney transplant. Uh, he is with his mom, Kate, at uh, Cleveland Clinic. They're in the transplant house, and they'll be there about another three weeks. They're doing pretty well, and if you get a chance to say hi on Facebook, uh, or uh, if you know Kate, give him a call, give him a little encouragement. I know that the, the time is grinding by, and even though there's improvement, they're so homesick, and they would love to hear from you if you have the chance. Um, our Thursday book study group now meets at 8 p.m. on Zoom. Are we doing the, 13, the uh, Breathing Underwater book? Yeah. Breathing Underwater by Richard Rohr is the book. Uh, please attend if you feel so inclined. It's a wonderful Zoom group, warm, uh, inviting, a wonderful conversation, always thought-provoking. It's a great experience. On Wednesday, October 26th, Barbie's Unravel Group meets at 5.15 p.m. This is a journaling and discussion group open to all. It is our intention to provide a safe, supportive atmosphere to promote self-awareness and self-expression for the purpose of connecting, learning, growing, and making friends. That's a lot. Please contact Barbie for reservations and additional information. It's usually the last Wednesday of each month, if you're interested. On Sunday, October 30th, it's our new member Sunday, and it's our annual meeting, and we're having a catered luncheon. It's a trifecta of wonderful things happening. Right, Stephen? Right. <laughs> if you uh, have not renewed your membership and you want to, there's still forms sitting on the, the benches. We welcome all members, all renewals all people. We're just glad you're here. Sunday, 
November 5th, Soul Collage at 1.30 to 5 with Megan Lyon. The cost is $50, includes all materials, pre-registration, uh, as required by emailing Megan. She's a wonderful person. If you're so inclined in their space, it's a great opportunity to experience what Megan has to offer you in terms of growth and a new experience. Barbie is doing a radical prosperity workshop. And I'm gonna give Barbie the microphone so she can tell you about that. This workshop starts in just a couple of weeks and since the annual meeting's next week, I guess this is my last time to really talk about it to get pre-registered. There are the flyers right up here if you're interested. And November in at Unity is Gratitude Month. And usually, you know, pre-COVID, I would always do some type of workshop in, in November around gratitude. And as I was thinking about that this year, I thought about prosperity and how prosperity and gratitude are intimately intertwined. And so each, this is gonna be five weeks, and each week we're gonna talk about a different aspect of prosperity. And on the flyer, all five of those things are, are listed, and we're gonna do them in this order. Emotional, physical, mental, spiritual, and then finally, in December, we'll talk about financial prosperity. But that kind of comes last after all the rest. And so I think by the time we get to week number five, it's gonna be a breeze. <laughs> if you're interested in coming, there is no charge. We will take up a love offering for the church, but there's no charge for the workshop. You don't have to come to all five if you're unable to come or if you think you've already reached 110% prosperity in that area and you just don't really need that, then that's fine too. It's gonna <laughs> it's, it's go be from 5.15 to 6.30, so it's just, uh, and Monday nights, it's just an hour and 15 minutes. I am not really going to teach you anything. I'm gonna create some space so that you can really tap into the prosperity that exists in your life and what you need to do to, to clean up that connection because we all have so much. So come, it'll be so, a little bit of writing, a little bit of journaling, a little bit of discussion, but I promise I won't keep you too long and I won't give you any homework. <laughs> okay, wonderful. I hope uh, anybody so inclined gets a chance to participate. Now I'm gonna hand the microphone over to our prayer chaplain, Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Good morning. Shalom. Welcome. Bienvenidos. Namaste. Happy Diwali. For those of you who are praying, who are doing Diwali, aloha and buongiorno. <laughs> I have made it back from Italia and uh, did not buy any leather goods. So my name is Sky Kirshner. Welcome to Unity of Kanawha Valley Live and Unity of Kanawha Valley Online. Thank you, Laura, for all of that. The mission of Unity of Kanawha Valley is to help create a, and support a welcoming community that values love, acceptance, spiritual exploration, and based on unity principles. We are here. We are here celebrating our 35th anniversary today. Yay! And uh, we, uh, we, uh, next week is our uh, annual meeting and our new member reception, but we thought we'd kick off this anniversary week with Sharon Mullins doing her amazing History of Unity of Kanawha Valley. So if you're wondering how we got here, Sharon is going to give us uh, a little taste of that. Uh, are you ready? All right. And uh, we've got uh, Myrtle Fillmore up and come on, Sharon. <laughs> Good morning. <coughs> what a fabulous moment to celebrate. The reason I'm doing this is because I've been around for 35 years. <laughs> 
so this is actually the the real opening day celebration when we met for the very first time. This picture that you have up here is the founder of Unity. This is Myrtle Fillmore. She and her husband were the founders of Unity. And by that I mean Unity um, National. Her story is that in 1886, think about that year, she seemed to be suffering from poor health. Uh, her husband was ill also, and he had a lot of financial problems. And there were none of the miracle drugs available for people to suddenly get well. Since she was a child, her parents had been telling her that she had inherited tuberculosis and that she uh, was going to be suffering and that she would die prematurely. What a great message. She was the mother of two young sons, and so she was afraid that her life was ending. They attended this lecture by E.B. Weeks, who was a student of Emma Curtis Hopkins, who was the foremost metaphysician of their time. She left that lecture that night, and one sentence was illumined in her soul, and that was, I am a child of God, and therefore I do not inherit sickness. She took within this truth, and she began talking to her body. Days, weeks, months went by, and gradually she saw improvement. Then she closed herself into her room with the blessing of her husband and began to study the four Gospels. She said, the truth came to me, a great revelation, showing me that I am a child of the one whole and perfect mind created to express the health that God is. By the time she healed completely, about 1888, Charles had discovered this truth too, and he was in better health and his financial life had improved. They were preparing to launch the spiritual work that would be known as Unity School of Christianity. She celebrated her healing and she wanted to share this with other people. So she began writing articles and letters to people who, um, you can imagine, those were letter writing days. And this is a book that uh, is about her and her healing letters. It's very inspirational. So fast forward to 1990 when the founder's great granddaughter, Connie Fillmore, was asked to synthesize unity teachings. She boiled down a century's worth of spiritual exploration into five statements, which we call in unity the five principles. She must have been divinely inspired because these five statements appear so simple on the surface, but they can easily take a lifetime to understand and practice this at depth. The Unity chaplains are studying these five principles in our monthly trainings. And uh, I have asked uh, Barbie and um, to, oh, sorry, and to um, pass the, these out. This is a small version of the, of the five principles that you can put in your billfold or your purse and have them with you so that you can begin to get them in your mind. So today we are celebrating, we have in, inherited from Unity the opportunity to have a Unity Church in Charleston. The way it began was there were three couples who decided that they wanted to bring the church here. 
They were friends and they had each experienced Unity Church. The first is Janet Manny. She and her husband were one of those three couples. The second is Charlie Weir and Sharon Mays. And the third couple is Kurt and Patricia Olmosk. They decided to um, form a steering committee to try to bring this about. And in that committee was Carmen and Rigo Vega and Faye and Charlie McComas. Also Rich and Karen Hopkins who have been longtime Unity members also and have just moved to North Carolina and also Joan and Jack Moss. So this little uh, committee its first responsibility was to find a sponsor for uh, a sponsored church and it was Unity of Roanoke Valley. The two ministers there were um, Catherine and Alan Robotham and they would come to Charleston and speak as part of the service and guided us in all the steps that were necessary to become a Unity Church. So they mailed out uh, invitations to friends. They, uh, there was a newsletter circulating in town at the time, which was kind of a holistic health newsletter and had a long mailing list. And so we sent it out to all those people too. They rented the third floor of the YWCA and they held their first service. There were 85 people who responded. I was sitting on the front row, just like I am every Sunday here. <laughs> I was so excited. So these people had to, they had an empty room. So every Sunday they had to bring um, the, um, they had to bring the coffee, they had to bring the books for the bookstore, the keyboard for music, song books, set up the chairs, make the coffee, and then when it was over, put everything back and pack it in their <laughs> trunk of their car and go home. So you could see they were dedicated people in that group. After some time of calling and inviting ministers or licensed teachers to speak on Sundays, the, the uh, group applied to the Association of Unity Churches to become a church. In 1988, we interviewed and hired a full-time minister who had just graduated from the Unity School of Christianity. His name was Greg Wisman. Among the 51 charter members, you may know Ruth Davis, Peg Garrett, Rich and Karen Hopkins, Sharon Mullins, Carmen and Rigo Vega, Joan Wysong, Barbie, Joan Wysong, original, and Susan Yancey were all members here. So eventually the Y decided that they wanted to use the space for some other activities and so we had to find another place to move. And that one was on Bridge Road, 1030 Bridge Road, which I think either was a shoe store or it turned into one after we left. <laughs> this was a, like a, a house with a living room and a dining room. And so the chairs were set so that the dining room faced the living room and the chairs were in there and uh, we made do. We were afraid that when we moved, we would lose people but luckily we actually gained people. So this is, this is my milestone story. So I'm, I'm giving you another milestone moment. You can imagine the first, first meeting was a milestone. This is the second milestone, finding a church home. So in 1993, we had to start finding Sunday speakers again, and we hired an experienced interim Unity Minister, Reverend Lois Webb from Kansas. She brought stability to our group and improved the communication among the board and the, the members. It was through her leadership and perseverance in researching available sites in town 
that we had the courage to move forward to purchase our own church. She served as a liaison to keep the membership and board informed, and there was a lot of discussion about whether we could really afford a church. So the best offer came from the Unitarian Universalists, who had this beautiful A-frame building on Blaine Boulevard in North Charleston, and they were wanting to sell it because they were moving to Kanawha Boulevard. So this is Lois Webb receiving some flowers from a handsome man named Bob Neal. <laughs> um, so um, this is the Unity Board at the time. In the front row is Lois Webb and Ruth Davis and Jeannie Chandler. And standing are Carmen Vega, Bob Neal, and Kim Ramsey, yes. and Michael Kenderis. So these are the people that had the nerve to sign the document that we were going to buy the church. <laughs> this is a, a picture of the Unitarian Universalist Board and our board. And it was a celebration, and I guess you can guess who took the picture. <laughs> so after we signed the papers, this is what our little church looked like on Blaine Boulevard. It was an A-frame, uh -huh. and it was actually built by local engineers and, you know, other people involved. And it was actually built and put together like a kit right on the spot. It's right on the river. So we drove over to the church and began to take down the Universal Unitarian Universalist sign and happily installed our own sign right out front. And I can see Kim again and Ruth and, um, and my son with a beard standing on the left. So, when we arrived there, these gentlemen were two of the engineers from DuPont who happened to be members, and they were still working on the church to fix it up and make sure every single detail was right. They went around and put all new light bulbs in. They uh, touched up paint. They're out there on the steps pa painting we're, after the church has even been sold. They were just absolutely amazing. So the next year, Unity began a ministerial search. Among others, uh, the board brought Woody, Pam, and their son, Doug Hawley, who was 12 years old, to the interview. After two years of ministerial training in Unity Village, Uni, uh, Woody was graduating. So after that weekend, the three of them said they knew this was their church. And when the members agreed, Woody was hired in August 1995, and the whole family moved to Charleston. And my dear friend Pam Hawley is sitting right back there today. <laughs> Woody served the church for um, about five years before his death in the year 2000. This is, this is uh, little Doug and Pam as they came to interview. He's 12 years old. He is not 12 years old anymore. He's a wonderful married man who's the father of two amazing sons. And Pam gets to help babysit one of them. So one of the fabulous things that happened while when he was the minister is he hired some really terrific people. And that would be a guy in the middle who I think you might recognize, Ron, our music director with Pam, and that's Jerry Ann Selby, who was one of the board presidents. He used, Woody used his carpentry skills to improve the building in a whole lot of ways. 
and Ron started a monthly coffee house to have, in, in fact, that was a tradition that the Unitarians had done before. Another musician he hired was Jack Kennedy, who continued to play the piano here for many years. This is the downstairs of the church, and it has Woody with some board members, including Sandy Blair. Sandy, wave your hand. <laughs> and, uh, um, and that is Kathy Dent with little Michaela, who is now running her own business, uh, Ola Lucy, right up on Bridge Road. <laughs> So during, um, oh, this is, this is one of the reasons we bought the church. If you go in, both ends of the church had these incredible windows, and you could really see out. Peg Garrett was one of, the lady in the very center there was one of our wonderful members and a wonderful benefactor for us. So during Woody's illness, the association gave financial and moral support and they sent an interim minister to assist us and paid for it. The members met their goal of paying off the church mortgage in seven years before the next minister was hired. Pam Hippler was hired as secretary. And thank you, thank you, thank you. She is now our administrative director. A big, big tradition. In 2003, um, Ron went ahead with this monthly musical thing there on weekends, and then he created a series of concerts at the Clay Center, and he named the series the Woody Hawley Concert Series. And now, for those of you who wonder why it's named that, you've seen the man. In 2004, we had um, a wonderful opportunity to hear a special speaker. He came to the church many times and uh, gave talks, and eventually it just dawned on us, what an opportunity, maybe we should hire this guy. So to show you how old the picture is, that is David, who is how old, Sky? And he's got, he's on the right. And then the Beck boys are in the center there. And they're all in college or, I don't think they're all in college, aren't they? Or almost. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 this, is like <laughs> this is what Sky looked like when he was really young. That's right. <laughs> so, um, needless to say, um, Sky brought lots of credentials with him, master's degree in social work, um, a doctor, doctorate of ministry, um, and he was the uh, executive director of the Kanawha Pastoral Counseling Center. So he brought lots of skills and abilities to this opportunity. Needless to say, we have grown, and uh, he has been our longest serving minister. At this time, I was so inspired by Unity Principles that I decided to enroll in seminary. And in 2016, I was ordained as an interfaith minister by the One Spirit Interfaith Seminary in New York City. <laughs> it was a lot of crying that day, I'll tell you that. In um, 2009, we started celebrating our third milestone, and that is when our board president, Matt Schwartz, developed a business plan to, to relocate the church to some, some new location. It's called the South Hills Presbyterian Church at 804 Myrtle Road, this place. He uh, figured out a way to uh, handle this financially, presented it, and we came up here to look at the property. 
um, I walked in the back door and the smell was so bad that I couldn't look around. There was mold and mildew. There was phenomenal, uh, the place had just gone downhill because the, the population of uh, congregants had just dwindled to practically nothing. And so the Presbytery wanted to sell the building desperately and we had to decide whether we wanted to buy it. So I told Sky this morning and I told Barbie last night, we stood out in the parking lot in the back holding hands and said, are we gonna do this? <laughs> you think we should? There's gonna be a lot of work that has to be done, right Linda? Who did a lot of the work to remodel. And so we said yes, we felt like it was the thing to do. So we moved forward. The Board of Trustees at this time who signed that document were Ruth Davis, Mary Ann Gatman, Karen Sylvester, Matthew Swartz, Linda Austin, and Judy Chapman. And so we began. This property is an historic stone church. It was built in 1902 with an addition built in 1955. And of course, one of the things that are so attractive are the beautiful stained glass windows. It was built before Bridge Road was paved. And the South Side Bridge had not been constructed. The stones were quarried on Davis Creek and they were hauled on mud roads on horse-drawn wagons. So this is an historic building. In 2014, uh, Scott talked to the Mountaineer Montessori School who was looking for a place to hold classes. So we ended up uh, renting our downstairs rooms to that school, which was a wonderful thing for our church. In 2014, we also celebrated Sky's 10 years of service to unity with a very surprise and embarrassing celebration. <laughs> um, the Woody Holly concert series continued at the Clay Center's Walker Theater after this, and we are the sponsor for that. A really fabulous thing happened in 2015 after we had rented the Blaine Boulevard Church to several different ministers, the property was sold. Yes. <laughs> uh, the church that bought it was um, it burned to the ground. It was in St. Albans. And uh, they felt like arsonists had burned it down. So they were very much ready to, to purchase the church. And they were this beautiful couple Estella Napier and her husband, Howard Napier, and it was the Church of Deliverance. They were absolutely wonderful to work with. David and I, and David Getman and I, and Greg Thaxton went, went in and, and, you know, we were hosting this exchange so that they, we could explain about the building and, you know, what it had and all that stuff. And they listened to us very sweetly and just said, okay, we're buying it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we thought we were doing a great job. So one of the issues that our building had is that the water from the mountain comes down the hill and was coming right into our front yard and coming through the foundation of the church. The integrity of the building rested on solving the problem of the water leaking through the foundation and from the runoff on the roof. Greg Thaxton became our uh, point person to try to figure out what we were gonna do. He had a, a wonderful contractor that he recommended and, he, he, and Greg became the point person on managing this amazing project. When they started digging in the front yard, instead of being able to just dig the dirt against the front of the building, they ran into giant rocks that had been put as fill in the front. And it 
totally changed the scope of the project and made it a lot more difficult. <clears throat> that same year, Barbie brought QuickBooks to the office, which is a wonderful thing. And our friend Patty Richmond uh, was driving around and saw Blue out in the driveway mowing the grass and just drove in and thought he was the minister and started a, a lifelong conversation that, <laughs> with, with Blue and ended up being one of our board members. She also provided the financial support for um, new gutters to, to solve part of that problem. She also recruited Ruth Davis and Jerry Ann to handle the design and installation of this beautiful stained glass panel right here. And, and then later, Sky organized the Windows project. You can't tell now how bad it was, but there was this Alexan plastic on the outside of all the windows to protect them, and you couldn't see through them anymore. So the Windows project was a huge undertaking. Another thing we did to um, improve the building. In October of 2018, we had a dedication ceremony of the Peace Pole that's out front. And then upgrades to lots of things in the, in the church. The, with the advent of COVID, we had to upgrade our audiovisual portion in order to deal with the, the uh, lack of being able to come and meet here in the church. And uh, I believe Barbie's the person who organized a grant to help buy some new equipment. And uh, of course, um, Rich Hopkins has just been the best in the world to handle that and get us, you know, put all these cameras in and get everything lined up for that. And fast forward to 2022, we have now renovated the manse. And I'm going to say probably Barbie renovated the manse with some help. <laughs> That's right. And, and to know what it was like before you, you just, uh, uh, let me just say, it's, it's a glorious. It is now rented to a family, which is another blessing for our church. And um, we are now renting the downstairs to the Vandalia Community School, which is a smaller organization than the Montessori was, but it's another, another blessing. So, let us just take a moment for prayer. As we give thanks this morning for divine love that moves in and through each of us, we give thanks for this beautiful building, the wonderful people who meet here, and for all the people who have contributed to this the church, some as giving tithes and offerings, some just coming to the services, and others in loving service as a board member. Our staff, our musicians, and people who rent this space prosper us and themselves as we continue to learn the blessings of unity and celebrate the five principles. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I do. Barbie's gonna uh, um, handed them out and I want, I hope that you would put them in your purse or your pocket, and we've also put them up on the Zoom board so that people could um, see those and perhaps work with them. If you aren't able to do something technologically, uh, Pam would be happy to mail something to you if you just give her a call. Thank you. Let's hear it for Sharon, and uh, Sharon, I've...
that latest, that latest project of the AV, uh, you can see some of our Zoomers on there now. They, we can't see all of them because uh, we've only got so much room on the screen, but uh, there are some of our Zoomers. So hello, Zoomers. It's uh, great to have you all with us as well. Um, And let's hear it again for Sharon. Thank you so much for that, uh, that history. Now, in case you're wondering, I did come back from my trip with a cough. It's not COVID. I've tested twice, uh, but I'm staying away from, the, from everything and everybody. So, uh, yeah, so today um, the, the, the theme for my very short message is uh, your inner battery and where is your power located. Uh, prayer is a central part of what we're doing here. And I just want to say for the kids, um, all these people in the, in, the, in the slideshow and everything, sorry, Bobby Lee, I'm moving around here. So when folks contribute to the building of a church, sometimes their names are, are listed. Uh, a number of folks' names are listed on the back plaque there. Uh, those are the Unity folks. These are folks who were Presbyterians because actually this was the first Elizabeth Memorial Church before Elizabeth Memorial moved up on the hill. So these are uh, contributors who were Methodist uh, from the original Elizabeth Memorial. And then we have plaques down below and you can see names of folks who are here with us in this congregation because these plaques are the unity folks and then uh, the plaque over there. So I just want to say it takes a lot to, uh, to keep uh, a building going. It takes a lot to keep, uh, to keep us uh, going. And we have uh, been very fortunate with our prosperity because we know that prosperity comes within. We haven't sweated about it. And it just seems to come together, although Stephen would beg to differ. Uh, <laughs> there is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears as our board president. So uh, let's hear it for uh, Stephen and all of our boards and uh, David Getman and uh, everyone who's, uh, Marianne and everyone who's been uh, involved with the, uh, uh, the coming together and the continuing of Unity of Kanawha Valley. Uh, let's, um, let's just do a quick prayer here as I try to figure out what we're gonna do for the rest of our time, but let's, um, let's go inside for a second and just say an affirmation for ourselves and let's have the affirmation be, I am connected to an inexhaustible power. I am connected to an inexhaustible power. <clears throat> and if you would imagine yourself, now at this point I usually say holding someone you love, but today I'd like to say imagine yourself holding yourself in love, looking yourself in the eye, whether you see yourself sitting in front of yourself or standing in front of yourself, this might be your younger self that you're imagining, it might be your future self. But I'd like for you to just appreciate all that it's taken in your history for you to be here today. Sharon was talking about all it took in Unity of Kanawha Valley's history, but each one of us have had our own amazing histories, our own journeys, chapters in our lives. And if you would just spend a moment appreciating everything it took for you to get here today. not just showing up today, but the way you showed up for so many of your days. The opportunities that you had, the challenges you had, the ways you helped yourself, the way others came to your aid. Look yourself in the eye.
Let gratitude for your journey fill your heart. And if you would say to yourself, thank you for being with me today. Thank you for being with me today. And if you would give yourself a nice yawn, a big stretch, turn to someone nearby and say, thank you for being with me on this journey. Don't leave anyone alone. If there's somebody sitting alone, go to that person and say, thank you for being with me on this journey. <laughs> I usually have a whole list of gratitudes, but I'm going to shorten it today. I'm just going to call out Laura, our luscious and lugubrious leader of laughter and love. Thank you for being our uh, worship leader today. Really appreciate it. And now let's, uh, let's go into a more extended time where we appreciate this present moment. <clears throat> So we notice the sounds in the room, the shuffling as we strive to be more comfortable for these few moments. And we might just appreciate the prosperity of being in this place, in this building. such an amazing story hearing about the stones that create the walls and the foundation for this building coming from whatever creek they came from on horse, horse-drawn carriages, Bridge Road not being paved yet, and how lucky we are to be a part of the legacy of this building. all the people that have breathed and been alive in this building, the baptisms, the funerals, the opportunity that we had to bring new life into this space, the support of the neighbors who were so glad that when we came to see this building revived again, to be a part of a community right in the center of things. Our prosperity, our health, our acceptance, our relationships, our connections, and the sense of guidance that has come through the space that we've created, the sacredness of every place, every moment centered here for us in this building. The history and also the future. And our intention in coming to this building that the message of unity have a more central location so that people could drive by and wonder what the heck is going on in there. So that people would be curious, what does that name mean? So the people in this valley would know that they had alternatives to fear-based religions, alternatives to ways that where they might have been stuck even without knowing it, and an opportunity to see whether this might be a good fit. We reach out to anyone, anywhere in any need or trouble, especially those looking for a home 
whether it's a physical home or a spiritual home. And we know that God's presence is everywhere and that the awareness of God's presence is possible in every moment, in every condition, in every situation, to every person without acceptance. And for this, we are grateful. Amen. <clears throat>
blind can see and the poor possess where the weak are strong and the first ones last at a table a new favorite song. Who wrote that song, Jim? A fellow named Russ Taff. Russ Taff. Wow. Russ and Tori Taff. Well, I know we're already afternoon, so I have a very short little uh, image message uh, for us, and I don't even have a joke. So, um, <laughs> Maria and I were, uh, were uh, bike riding in a Kanawha State Forest yesterday, just absolutely beautiful. Uh, Italy was beautiful, but West Virginia is really beautiful. And uh, really glad to be back. Um, I, I'm an electric bike guy. Uh, I, I found electric bikes really work well for me. You can go kind of twice as fast. It's still hard to get a good workout. The uh, regular bikers think you're a... Uh, well, I, I won't even go there. But, <laughs> They think you're cheating, but uh, a wussy. A wussy, yeah, thank you. That's the word I was looking for, Danny. Yeah, but you know, uh, you, you, you are who you are, and you like what you like, and, and, I, and I love it. So we were in Kanawha State Forest. I uh, had uh, two of them, and so um, one of them is kind of sporadic, uh, the way it works, and uh, so um, I offered Maria the, the one that works really well and is kind of rock rock solid. And she said, no, I'll do this one because it's she's more comfortable in it. But as we're going along, the battery starts acting sporadically. And, and uh, we're, the, the first part is uphill because you want to do the uphill first so that you can go downhill at the end. So if we're going uphill and she's stopping every 100 yards or so because the she has to restart the motor or restart the engine. Uh, by the way, when we were in Italy, we rented elect an electric Vespa, one of those little scooters, just the two of us. Oh my gosh. It was like Honeymoon City all over again. It was really, really fun. That's on my wish list. Uh, I'm coming to the prosperity class because I, I see an electric Vespa in my future. So at any rate, uh, she's, she's getting frustrated because this thing, and she, and she looks and she said, it says the battery is empty. Now I thought, oh, oh great, you know, here we are a couple miles into this, we've got a couple miles more to go and, and the battery's giving out. And uh, I thought that was kind of strange because I had charged it up before we left. And, uh, but sure enough, the, uh, the display on the handlebar said that the battery was, was what do you call it when a battery's out? Uh, dead. The battery was dead. I said, oh, shoot. So I, so I said, well, let, let's switch bikes. It, it, at least I'll get more of a workout. But then I looked down at the battery, and, and the battery has its own display. And I pushed the button for the battery display, and the battery said, fully charged. And so I thought, well, that's, that's weird. The battery says it's full. The, 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 the console says it's dead. So I started pushing the on-off button several times, and sure enough, it, it came on, but it said the battery would like had one, one, uh, one little piece left to it. So I, I did that, and you know, the same thing that was happening to Maria, you know, go about 100 yards, and then it would conk out, and then just have to restart it again. And then I started to get superstitious. I started to say, well, maybe if I like spun around once and got back <laughs> on the... Would it go, could I get 200 yards out of it? I didn't start praying, right? I didn't do the begging prayer and say, because I remember being a charismatic Christian in college when a car wouldn't start and we laid hands on the engine. <laughs> you know, I mean, basically the engine was flooded. You had to wait 10 minutes and then it started again. But no, my friends believe that Jesus came and, you know, that Jesus, the mechanic, fixed the... Uh, but at any rate, I... Uh, but I... I 
But I thought, and then every now and then, the console said that the battery was full. And the battery always said it was full, the, 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 the meter on the battery, but, but this thing was going haywire. Eventually we had the, uh, you know, our day. But as I was going along, I was thinking, this is kind of a unity image. This is kind of a unity metaphor. You know, sometimes my console battery, I think, you know, I'm running on empty here. I, I don't have any more power. I don't have any more energy left. And yet the battery itself says, no, Sky, I'm fully charged, right? But my experience is I'm drained. I'm, I'm, I'm dead. I don't have anything left. And I started thinking about um, the daily word because the daily word often starts off with this contrast between appearance and a deeper reality. You know, that the, con that, that the appearance is frequently that, that life is hard and things are tough and your battery's dead. And then the second paragraph is always the reminder, but if you go to the source, if you go to the actual battery, you'll see that the battery is actually full. Somewhere between the battery and the console, the connection, the, there was a, the connection wasn't kind of, kind of smooth or operating well. And uh, <clears throat> so I just wanted to lift up this idea that um, the unity message is that our source always has a full battery. The unity message is that you have something inside you that cannot be exhausted, cannot be extinguished. That inner source, the, that battery never goes dead. Uh, this is what Jesus discovered, I think. He, he had a pretty good connection with his inner battery, right? He, uh, so, so he's operating out of this sense that he knows that his battery's full. And, uh, this sense that um, from that he is able to do remarkable things, whereas me and perhaps uh, the rest of us from time to time wonder uh, if I'm drained and if my battery's dead, just like the console on the, uh, on the bike. So I hope that's a helpful image for you. Uh, certainly we have ways of reminding ourselves that we do have a full battery inside us, and one of those ways is to come together to hear fabulous music and to go inside and be reminded of that truth. So with that, I will stop. I do want to remind uh, us all, including myself, that the wind is always at our back and our battery is always full. And with that, I'll turn it over to Sharon, our prayer chaplain, who's taken us home today. Look, here we go. <coughs> You all come forward. Yeah, <laughs> Violet's battery is Looks on like him. <laughs> Let's pray our offering prayer together. Divine love moving in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give in love. I trust God. And I am grateful. Tell my lover everything I know 
I bring her with me everywhere I go. It's understood we're hand in hand. It means much more when we take a stand. True love travels from heart to heart. It's always there when you're ready to start. A long and steep and winding road. Love's gonna help you lift that load. When you pray, move your feet. Bring your love to the people you meet. Get out to chair, walk the street. Mother, Father, God, we give thanks today for the journey of 35 years, bringing us to this beautiful place with these loving souls that call unity home. We are so grateful for the opportunity to worship as we choose in a positive manner, using the power of our minds to connect with the divine at any moment. And for this, we are grateful. And so it is. Amen. Let's form a circle. There we go, there's our circle, now we're complete. Are there any birthdays besides Unity's birthday or anniversaries today? Anybody? We'll sing to Ron next week, we'll sing to Unity this week, how about that? <laughs> 